Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good day and welcome to another scintillating and enthralling episode of the White Blood Panorama on your favorite channel, White Blood Multimedia. This is a show that hosts amazing people to tell us their stories. My name is Umar Isa Dandogo and I am the host of the show. My guest today is reported by his students to have done some pretty much unthinkable stuff. Well, risky ones, some could say. As they say, he has visited as many prisons as they cannot even remember. And he has had different encounters with criminals, both at home and abroad. But mind you, he is a researcher, not a criminal. Dr. Abdullahi Maikano Madaki is a sociologist, well, criminologist in particular, from the prestigious Bayero University, Kano. In a paper he co-authored, something attention grabbing says and i quote the youth today live with the two contrasting uh, facts or social realities glowing potentials and prospects on the one hand and enormous challenges on the other what is that supposed to mean well we'll find out in the course of the program while dr mekano madaki is here in the studio with me to talk us through his amazing research works and to also clarify whether or not he is that very person who had to be in different prisons before finishing his research work. So the questions are, how much of an experience has he gathered so far? And is studying the minds of criminals as sweet as listening to Bollywood music? Well, we we're gonna also find out soon enough. Also on the show, as the 2023 elections are underway here in Nigeria, what should we do to avoid violence before, during, and even after the elections. Well, Dr. Mekano Madaki from Bayer University, Kano joins me now in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for being you're, on the show. You're welcome. Well, it has it's been... my pleasure to be here. Yeah, of course. It's also our enormous pleasure to host you on the show. Thank I don't you. know where to begin. I have been, for a very long period of time, so enthusiastic and particularly interested to host you on this particular show. Um, so as to talk about many things, like I said in the introduction, mm. and to also allow you and ask you to clarify some of those things that could quote unquote sound mysterious <laughs> to some of the some of our listeners so once again thank you you're welcome um let's kick off with brief introduction biography of yours who is the criminal mekano madaki before we even dive deeply into the cracks of the discussion so i was relying to me that the nation and regime viewers and listeners assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum and good day um mekano madaki is just a young man with the, with the middle age who was born, grew, and educated in Kano State. Uh, I am from Kano Municipal, in particular Kabara Patas. Wow, very close to Dandago. Yes, very close to Dandago. Oh, okay. That's where my family home is. I got my education all in Kano. Mm to Bayer University and later I went to the US mm. universities. I said universities. Okay, not only one university. Yes, I was in University of Texas at Austin. Mm. And then later I in was- Southern part of the US? Yes. Texas? Yes. Or oh, Midwest, something like no, that? No, no, it's Midwest. Yeah. yeah. Um, later I was at the University of New York. Oh, okay. In the yeah. northeast, northeast part of the, yeah. of the US. Yeah, of course. And I was born in the 70s oh. got all my education up to degree level by the age of 24. wow so my first degree was 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 concluded mm. but when i was exactly 24 years old that was when precisely in precisely 1996 that was one year after i was born so, <laughs> <laughs> so you finished that, that's, that's nine, when that's i was nine. one year old and mm. soon after my graduation from the university, I went for the compulsory national assignment. Of course, NYS. everybody knows that NYS. Mm. I served in Kogi State. Mm. I started teaching at Federal College of Education, Okene. What did you teach? I taught sociology mm. okay. because they were taking sociology as a course. Good. And 
I left barely six years to the expiration of my NYC to radio Kogi for oh. some reasons mm. because that time the school had some crisis oh, and the yeah. school had to close down oh my God. because of the riots mm. that was commissioned by the students okay. just to show their anger over that an issue that okay. were going on in the school mm, yeah, yeah. so for me not to waste much time i simply switched mm -hmm. to Ko radio Kogi okay. and went and I finished my NYSC at Radio, radio Kogi in Lokoja. What's the connection between a sociologist and a, uh, I, a journalist? I, I have done ever mm. any other work that a radio man mm. could do in a radio station in radio. Reporting, presenting, editing. Reporting, mm. presented, wow. casting news. Wow presentation excellent you know mm. uh, everything that wow, you know that's excellent and that time i was having the interest mm. and when they listened to my accent mm. and they realized i could be able to probably yeah. do what they expected mm. and they now said okay i can fit here i can mm. fit here and i kept be rotated mm. from one unit or department to another oh, that's and i was i found that very interesting mm. and when i finished on coming back to Kano, I thought I was going to work in any yeah. radio station because okay. of the interest I developed mm. and the experience. Of course. Five months, almost six months experience mm. I have gathered. But yeah. I couldn't work there. I moved on to a particular private company that I worked for some two years. Uh, that I realized as, what? as as marketing okay. manager. Marketing manager. And because it has it is a family yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. Family business and they wanted me to be the marketing manager because that time the suspicion was some the, the person who was handling the marketing manager and um, mm. my marketing office yeah. was not much trustworthy. Yeah. So they wanted a family member to take over mm. and I was simply assigned. Oh, yeah. But I realized it was a very tedious, time-consuming, and overwhelming job. Yeah, that of course. I was not interested. Oh, yeah. As I so I could I could not yeah. get out of the job yeah. until and unless I think twice. Yeah. So what I did was to simply go and obtain MSc form oh. and got admission yeah. without anybody knowing. Mm -hmm. I know when I present my NYC admission letter to my family, it was simply act, and that was exactly what happened. Mm. I got the admission. I said, okay, I'm leaving this job, but then because this is what I have. Oh, yeah. education, please go back to school. Oh, and I was very happy. Because they and know the value, they knew the value yeah, of, course, of, of course. education. And I also read their psychology. Oh. That, that was the only reason that I could leave peacefully the job I will assign to So you as an expert, you need to apply. I must what apply. You, the theories that you have studied exactly. at school. Exactly. Even at home. Exactly. Good. So I studied their psychology and I knew that was the only reason I could leave that job honorably and peacefully yes. and exactly that was what happened great um it was after my master's immediately Bayer university department of sociology employed me as a assistant lecturer so great. i started all the way from there uh, around and 2002 no it was 2004 okay 2004 yeah 2004 yeah. i started the teaching mm, in the university and all the way phd mm. i started phd mm. 2005 i had to move to the u.s mm for the two programs I have oh. done in Texas and New York and after which I came back. Was so, it part of your BUK PhD or they were, they were, they were separate PhD? No, programs. they were part of my BUK PhD. Okay. And I had no option because I wanted to do some work okay. in the US. Oh, good. Again, it's a good question. Mm, yeah. There is this program what that they call Fulbright program for the US. Yeah, I, I got Which you. is a prestigious mm. program that has been granted to extraordinary students and scholars. And you are one of them? No, I'm not. You I'm are not. one of them? And I'm not. Okay. I was so only you, you benefited lucky. from it. I'm only, I was only lucky okay. to benefit from that. Mm. When I applied, and they realized my work revolves around <laughs> studying prisoners yeah. Yeah. in prisons, mm. and wanted to make a comparative analysis mm. between Nigeria's and you america's mm. prisoners okay. this approved okay. and i was granted that because they saw a potential in you and there was something that you were they were particularly interested in Maybe Maybe that, that, i think that, that that's for them. that's your second point is mm. the most relevant to me oh, okay. not really the potentialities okay. but then yes. something so interested humbling. yeah something they are interested mm -hmm. in just for me to harness uh -huh. explore and put advanced i mean in terms yeah. of findings mm -hmm. what has been happening in nigeria in nigerian prisons 
and again in the US. Trying to make, of course, of course. ordinarily, logically, commonsensically, someone yeah. can simply say Nigeria and US prisoners, mm. there must be sharp divide. Of again, course, there is. But then I wanted to see mm. what is there and what is here. Okay. These have been looking at the laws. Mm. What are those rights? Because mm. prisoners have rights. So my interest was prisoners' rights okay. and other unintended consequences of mm. imprisonment okay. in Nigeria and and the United States. Okay, I, we will talk about it, I, I, hopefully, in the course of the program. But one thing, mm. when did you go to the U.S.? 2005 it, or six? It was in 2008, 2008. And I came back in 2011. It was like, 2008 was like two years after the release of one famous American TV series, Prison Break. Yes. Did you have to watch yes. it? I had to watch that film mm. several times. Okay. But of course, it's an interesting question okay. because yeah. what led to my interest in studying in prison was when I was doing my master's, I had the opportunity to help or to serve as a research assistant mm. in prisons okay. for my teachers. Wow. I had two teachers mm. who have also conducted studies in Nigerian prisons. Mm. Now, and I was opportune to serve as one of their researchers mm -hmm. and again i had the opportunity to visit prison several times in nigeria yeah, yeah, yeah. and that has given me the interest mm -hmm. that has given me the light that again this can be an area that i can also take a different dimension mm -hmm. of course to also bring out certain ideas in terms of how prisoners are being managed in prison but so you're now yeah. this time around with slight modification mm -hmm. instead of focusing only on nigeria yeah. but also in another country just to see some of the differences and technicalities mm -hmm. in managing controlling and also uh, i mean uh, running prisons in the world so you are now expressing your deep gratitude to your research to your professors but my teachers yes, who have yeah. who have exposed me yeah, i mean they course. have introduced paved the way for, way for me to yeah. really understand what is going on in the other parts of the world yeah. which is the prison you know yeah. as students of criminology we always yeah. say prison is a different world how is it it's, it's different how from it? this world that we're living okay in the sense that it is a mini world mm -hmm. where you see everybody and everybody is doing everything it's a kind of what we call total institution mm. that whatever you do you do inside as a staff or as a prisoner you don't whatever you do you do inside you come out you don't come out and do it and then let her go back okay. so you remain within you do whatever you do so that's why you find everything mm. that you see in this world that you were living and you also see it in prison you, you emphatically said everything everything you see outside you also see it in yes. prison the only difference is in this world may be legal, yeah. in the prison may be illegal. Okay. For example, yeah. example. homosexuality, okay. heterosexuality. Yeah. That in some parts of the world, homosexuality is legal. Oh, yes. In prison is illegal. It's illegal. Hat it's illegal. Okay. Heterosexuality is legal outside when there are is is a bit is between marriage couples between okay. partners yes. so there is concern between adults yeah okay but then if you go to prison and do that it's illegal so certain opportunities i mean such rights yeah. are, are, are waived are suspended we okay. said are suspended yes yes, yes. You know i mean the moment you are admitted into prison you are not going to uh, entertain yeah. and, 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 and enjoy mm. certain fundamental human rights including so, mm. the fundamental human rights that are there enshrined mm. in the nigeria's 1999 constitution of the federal republic yeah. so so you're saying that when somebody when a prisoner has a wife outside and she visits him at the uh, at the prison yeah. they will not be allowed no, no. to have privacy he's not allowed he's not allowed in fact no prisoner is allowed to receive any visitor without with the, in the absence of prison official okay if you want to consult with any any visitor a friend a wife a husband father mother anybody yeah. your son your daughter as a prisoner yeah. it has to be in the presence of a prison official in the event mm -hmm. you didn't see prison yeah. official around yeah then where you are co consulting yeah. i mean you receiving your visitor mm -hmm. you are you must be filmed okay there is camera there around. camera cctv is around yeah. and somebody is somewhere watching what you are doing is it a global thing or it's only in nigeria what is this global it's international I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm bringing the filming thing, the yeah. camera thing, the CCTV issue because is, is, you can't see that in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, so it's a global practice. In Nigeria, you only see the presence of physical 
prison personnel yeah. who will stand by you or sit by you and sometimes they will give you limited time mm. say next 20 minutes next 30 minutes you must run out and you must abide by such limitations yeah. given to you by the official as as instructed by their laws and I, I, again mm. different countries have different laws guiding mm. again teleguiding uh, how prisoners are going to be managed in prison but there is in the case of julian assange yes the boss yeah. of wikileaks yes. Yes. uh he he is reported to have uh got married with one of his lawyers mm -hmm. uh stella morris yes. and when he was in the ecuadorian embassy yes. of course they had one child yes. and i think when he was in belmarsh prison mm -hmm. yes. they had the second child yes so this seems to be in, in contrast or in contradiction it's, 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 with what you have it's, said. It's not in contrast. Mm -hmm. His own case yeah. is entirely different from total imprisonment. Okay. His imprisonment is partial. Okay. He was given some waivers. He was allowed to do some external interactions. Okay. Remember, yeah. Asenge was never denied his access to internet oh, he was yeah. never denied access to his computer mm. he was never denied access to global community yeah, i could see again even when he was in the reason why yeah. the explanation for him is some people outside there are monitoring him okay. and he was you know remember he was accused of mm -hmm. using the internet yes to leak some valuable confidential yeah. classified information yes against the u.s government against not only the u.s government okay. some governments in the u.s and also in, in europe okay in europe yes. now mm. because they want to monitor him mm. and they want to assess his capacity mm. and the extent to which he can be able to penetrate classified information mm. they allow him access okay. so it's like what do you call a typical house and language that's what they that did. it's not a a complete total imprisonment but he was allowed to be interacting with outside world. now mm -hmm. he was allowed to receive visitors fully yeah but he was being filmed yeah. he was allowed to receive his wife mm -hmm. but he was being filmed again the intel was also on his wife because mm -hmm. they wanted to know what his wife was doing while she was outside okay so his own case is we, we, we call that second class imprisonment okay. it's not primary yeah, second not primary, first class first class it's secondary it's not primary mm -hmm. and you know it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's second class not first class yeah it's secondary not primary yeah, yeah. so he's only a secondary imprisonment okay. which would to such a reasonable extent some prisoners partial yeah. imprisoned prisoners mm -hmm. are being given or allowed some to privileges. enjoy certain privileges and rights and that and one could not even be a right or privilege for him because he was being monitored mm -hmm. and that's yeah, against, yeah, yeah. against yeah. human yeah. rights yes uh, yes because so. that was the source mm -hmm. of his allegations oh yes and they want to continue to follow and see the extent to which he can be able to penetrate their classified information oh, oh let's now drop the issue of julian assange mm -hmm. um uh, 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 on the one side but yeah. I, I only hope this is a very interesting yeah. Yeah. global politics right. stuff uh, we hope one day we'll pick up on it but, but um, coming back to the issue mm. of you watching prison break how much of um uh, an, an inspiration did you get from prison break did it open the way pave the way for you but actually not because even the time that i watched prison break i was already having okay. some rudimentary ideas about how prisons are mm. again at that time i have little idea on how prisoners okay. are recruiting mm. are planning mm. and executing mm. break okay beginning from mobilization mm. and that mobilization naturally begins from one on one mm. yes all from on all one. the way going to multiple yeah. then getting like minds bringing mm. them together selling the ideas yeah. abide it it's convincing them to accept and then sitting down mm. to to plan before the actual day for the violence so in prison that's already the process but the prison break has given me some pieces of information that were very useful at that material point in mm, time yeah. particularly getting to know how the global prison system operates because at that material point in time I was having little mm. or even no mm. experience about I'm saying experience mm, yeah. mm. not about reading stuff yeah, yeah. now it's no experience Practical about experience. how 
global prisons have been managed and it has given me certain ideas on how to go about mm -hmm. picking pieces places or areas of interest to go and now harness or explore mm. to get valuable information and really how many prisons my... have you visited so far in nigeria ah, that's 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 a simple but then difficult question okay. to answer because there are just very many in Kano. very many in Kano. Kano, say, yeah. for example in Kano, instead i've been to two. seven or eight prisons ah, in Kano. yes we only have two prisons no, well you what are talking you about city, that you are talking about the city prisons okay then, what, what, what do you the satellite prisons you have in the lgs Oh. Even two weeks ago, I was in Guanzo prison. Um, are they official or? They are official. Uh, they are part of the prison. Or black sites. No, no, they call them that, 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 that was they call satellite prisons. Oh, okay. They are part of Goron. They are part of Goron Duse and Kano Central. Okay. So. And they exist. Okay. One, Guanzo, Bichi, Dambata, mm -hmm. Wujin, mm -hmm. Tidungwada, okay. Karai. Yeah. Ah. Many of them, and but, they're there. But not many people in, like outside, know about their existence. Yeah, because they don't have any the business public. with them. Okay. If you don't have any business within the world, mm -hmm. you may not necessarily know it exists. Even two weeks yeah. ago, I was in Gon I was in Gonzo Satellite Prison. Two weeks ago. Okay. Because I received a call, somebody was sick and needed an assistant. I had to go there. That's what I've been doing. Well, are you a medical doctor? No, I'm not. But, but what, then they needed the an assistance in terms of financial support. Oh yeah. He needed medications. Uh, of course, the prison is supposed to provide, yeah. but they, they have limitation in terms of resources. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not in every because of the corruption in the government. So, of course, yes. And again, it, by law, okay. it's not every illness mm -hmm. that can be catered by the prison authorities. There are some specific chronic illnesses mm -hmm. that only families of the prisoner will be asked to call upon and handle the matter. And is it? Um, legally binding stuff. Yeah, that's why I said by law. Okay. It's legally binding. What about in America? And in the countries? US, there is no limit. No limit. You are a prisoner, you are a prisoner, you are entitled to everything. You know, one good thing about imprisonment is hmm. you are expected to receive everything free. Uh -huh. Accommodation free, bed free, hmm. beddings free. When I say beddings, I mean you know. mattress, yeah. pillows, blankets, bed, you know, free. You are expected to receive uniform, prison yeah. uniform free, hmm. food free medication <laughs> oh free God. ledger free supporting facility yeah. free you enjoy everything free and that's what we see american prisoners growing oh, fatter yes, yes, and fatter every even day. in nigeria prisoners grow fatter but there's even no in nigeria sometimes in sometimes what happens is in nigeria mm. the the kind of food they are being given mm. is not too nutritious mm. enough to provide them with what will make them grow fat yeah, yeah. but in many parts of the world prisoners enjoy well Okay. In fact, people prefer to be in prison than I was. Even in Nigeria, mm -hmm. there were instances which I personally mm -hmm. wanted. Yeah. Someone would be asked to go, well, gentlemen, you are prison, them expired today. Police, you are leaving the prison, you will tell the prison of you, no, I'm not living. Okay. Even in Nigeria, because I have seen two if, cases. If they go outside, they, will, they have nobody to feed them, nobody to Exactly, take care of them. that's the fear. Mm. And they are now comfortable in prison because they have stayed probably long. So are you now telling us that living in prison is as enjoyable as living outside the prison? For some people, yes. Okay. For some prisoners, yes, because it's not easy to come out and begin to struggle for food. To begin to struggle for any social, economic and political position. By the way, the most important thing is mm. for you to be accepted back Where because is, that mm. concept of concept of stigma yeah, is, has is, already is. been imposed on you. The level entrenched that you, also. Yeah, of course, mm. you were once in prison, you were a prisoner, you were attacked to be a criminal, you were arrested, you were prosecuted, you were convicted, you were sentenced, you were, you were put in prison, you know, for you to come back to your community and get accepted. Yes, I mean, that's a hard that is stuff. I mean, challenge, challenge for many, so they prefer to stay where they are recognized, they are being given respect, mm. and they are being respected by other fellow prisoners and prison officials because they have stayed longer. You make it sound as if it's enjoyable and comfortable living in prison for as some yes. for some people yes while we have been receiving reports different reports that the the rooms for prisoners like are so how overcrowded and so small to uh, accommodate the kind of prisoners that are put you in. are you are accent stylishly an interesting question okay that in many countries mm of Africa, yeah. Asia, and Latin America. Mm. Their prisons are overcrowded, overpopulated. I must say this. Mm. Every prison yeah. has official capacity. 
every cell has official capacity mm -hmm. now for any prison to exceed its official capacity then it has gone beyond its original design mm -hmm. understand but then for so many reasons mm -hmm. which we do not have to go into that detail here now many prisons particularly in nigeria are overcrowded i'll give you an yeah. example Kano Central Prison. Yeah, Kurmawa. Kurmawa Prison. Mm. Originally has been built to only accommodate 190 prisoners. 690. Less than 1,000. 690. Mm. I assure you. Yeah. If you go there now, mm. you, if you go there now, you hardly get less than 1,800 people inside. Less than? You hardly get oh. less than 1,800. Because we have seen instances mm. where the prison that has capacity of 690 in the past was accommodated to more than 2200 people that's what what you are talking about yes of course in other parts of the world mm, yeah or well, even in nigeria if you go to port Harcourt prison mm. port Harcourt prison yeah. the capacity is 880 Eight, 880 okay. at some point i was in port Harcourt prison mm. i saw more than 4400 people 4, a prison that has official capacity of only 880 people 4,000. If you go to much. Benin prison, mm. Benin, yeah, that's in Edo State. In Edo State, mm. the official capacity of that prison mm. is also 750. Okay. There, in the last 10 years, mm. you will never go to Edo prison, I mean, Benin prison, mm. and see less than 3,500 prisoners. Oh my god. So, technically, mm. most of these prisons have exceeded their official capacity. Which invariably make your life difficult for the prisoners. Mm. And because now, yeah. essentially by the time he says the the capacity of the official has been exceeded, mm. the official capacity of the prison has been exceeded has, has been exceeded. Mm. It means the cells are also overcrowded. Yes, they are. Meaning every prison has cells. Mm. And now the cells have also their own capacity. Mm. One cell, say probably the official capacity is twenty people. Twenty people. Don't be surprised you see up to eighty inside. That which is making life difficult for the prisoners in Nigeria. Again, mm. we have cells, what you, those cells that are designed, what you call dormitory like cells. Mm -hmm. Dormitory like cells. Mm -hmm. Very long haul. Yeah, yeah. Was based by the two sides, double bunk beds, and you see people. Mm. And mostly for, mm. for minor offenders. Yeah. And the population is categorized mm. into many categories of prisoners. Sure. I waited trial members convicted. I'm convicted. Of different categories but some are convicted to spend a small amount of time okay, yeah. and what they call small amount of time is less than two years anything less than two years is a small amount, is a small amount. Yeah. it's not as it could be nine know, months i mean one year you no know, it can be yeah, even yeah. two weeks oh, yeah, you have seen instances where you will be asked to go and serve for only two weeks by the court and that's conviction that's conviction okay, yeah, I understand. you'll be convicted by the sentence only two weeks mm. sometimes one month some so from two weeks up to two years mm. now that what you call short Mm. And the long term may begin from mm. after two years to up to 100 years, mm. 200 years. Because we have seen instances where even someone has been convicted to go to prison and serve for 1,000 years. Oh. I witnessed an instance in the U.S. 1, I witnessed and personally witnessed an yeah. instance in the U.S. What did he do? Where someone Chilling was with... asked to go to prison in Rikers Island prison in New York and served for 885 years <laughs> did he kill he the was, mother no of the he wasn't killing what he was a primary school teacher uh. who show a video yeah. to children puppies okay puppies less than 12 years pornographic or pornography videos. pictures oh that's terrible yeah and when the case was presented mm. before an american court the argument made by lawyers was yeah. He has already abused the mind of those children sure. and it has to do with psychological damage mm. and it's going to be t lifetime sure. effect yeah. on, the, on brain, the children on the minds yeah. and emotions of the children yeah when they and grow up for that reason that, yeah. he was convicted of that amount 885 years oh. i personally witnessed 885 years that doesn't mean he's going to live up to that time okay of yeah, course yeah, yes yeah, if you course. don't live up he to that die. time probably he was 50 plus uh -huh. when that happened of course that time he was 34 i can remember he was 34. Okay, yeah. so but then so many things may happen on the way because that's what they call a uh, review every year they review cases for convicted yeah. if you like it have been wiped you can be wiped mm. or the sentence may be reduced okay. up to time may be even discharged mm. when they realize he has 
changed yeah. all the hours. So they, the sign of a mosque yeah, or create. Is that what they call parlor or something like that? Is, 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 it, pardon. It's, it's yeah. pardon. Yeah, pardon. Yeah. Yes, mm. it's pardon. Mm, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. pardon, but then before the pardon, they do what you call sentence reduction mm. practice. Yes. They call it in the US sentence reduction practice. Mm. You were sentenced 10 years. And there is a committee, standing committee that yes. will keep reviewing cases mm. of convicted. Yeah. And when they are reviewing, they are still giving recommendations. Yes. From that 10 years, can we reduce that sentence to five? They can reduce it. That sentence reduction program. Okay. And if you are lucky, after my, you might have spent two, three, yeah. four, five years, they may say you, have, you are going to enjoy the pardon and you may be okay. uh, unconditionally released and you may leave the prison. Okay. okay. So, so prisons in some parts mm. of Africa, Asia, Latin America wow, are bastardly crowded. Wow. I'm saying bastardly, bastardly crowded. crowded. Yeah. But in developed nations, mm. they live by their official okay. capacity. Yeah. Okay. It's 10 people, it's 10 people. Oh my God. It's one person, it's one person. Mm. So some prisoners can live in population. Mm. Population in the sense that some cells can accommodate more than two people. Yeah. But some cells are individual cells that one cell per person yeah and that cells Do are also there yeah. and they exist in many parts of the world doctor we only have two minutes to go but and, and unfortunately we have not even exhausted hmm. half of the issues yeah, i have well, outlined. we didn't say anything we have not said anything of course but I, we would like to um ask for your favor to one day not, not just next week or we, week after next week, to one day fix a time for us you're welcome yeah you're of welcome. Course, and, and come no back to, especially one issue that i'm particularly interested in is how to study the minds of criminals Goodness. this <laughs> is very i don't very, know why you are interested in studying the mind of criminals. i i have been watching american but it's good to live with criminals <laughs> when you are in not not outside yeah in yeah in prison yes you so. get to know their psychology mm. you get to know their minds yeah. you make, get to know their perception yeah. you get to know their reasons mm. and they will tell you why they committed in many cases yeah. when i visit prison mm. i go to prison as as a researcher yeah. but the prisoner didn't know i was a researcher oh, so you sometimes i go there me? I, I mean yes you, you I are, participate in everything they do. That's covert I belong to them. What oh, do you call okay. participant of the vision? Yeah, participant of the vision. Whatever they do, I hmm. when what they are doing is not dangerous to me. Oh, uh, okay. In yeah, what is yeah. when it is not dangerous to oh, me? Yes, if okay. I feel I'm not comfortable, I'm not doing. It. So you will just be there. You will pose as a as a criminal yes quote unquote, yes as yes. a perceived criminal pretend. Pretend. Yeah, yes. Pretend as yes. Pretend as yes. Criminal. yes and then you live with them yes i put i will pretend as if I'm, i was also admitted like them okay i was accused of something like mm -hmm. them i was part of them because i really want to know what they are doing okay both at night and the daytime so how did how do you did you get did you and how do you get the time to draft this is a good question that? in many instances I didn't use paper and pen. You save everything. I use my brain. I also use a manashua machine. Meaning? A small manashua with me inside my pocket. It's so Only funny. me and the officials knew I was having a machine. So it would That's be recording secret? Everything for me, including the videos where it is applicable. But if I'm clipping video clipping, I must inform the official okay, because yeah. it is not legal. Mm. You have to be given the permission before you video clip. Yeah. But for the voices, no. Is I it, can do it any time. Is it true in America there are privately owned prisons? Yes, there are. It's true. We have because started. I watched it in one There area. is there are. I was in three of them. Oh good. good. There are privately owned prisons managed by private institutions by proprietors. Oh my god, just like And private some prisoners have been taken there and government are paying the prison of prison owners. Like the private schools we have in yeah, Canada, yeah, there yeah. are private prisons in the US. Not only in the US, mm. there are private prisons in some parts of the world they do exist and we have started agitating for that in nigeria, in nigeria. considering the huge amount of prisoners or the growing number of prison population that we're experiencing in nigeria yeah. and the extent to which we could not even control the crowd yeah, of course. you know the crowd is, is is creating a kind of multifaceted problems mm. in terms of making softer criminals to be hardened mm -hmm. because we as students of criminology we say prisons are institutions of crime yeah if you go there with, with little mm -hmm. little cre crime knowledge yeah. you will learn more sophisticated criminal skills so in prison because 
you get to interact with sophisticated criminals, sophisticated minds that will give you high extraordinary skills. skills on how to commit crime and criminality. Some of them, yeah. they got their linkages in prison. Wow. You take them prison, they interact with few sophisticated ones that would die. They know they are not coming out soon. They'll simply leave them out with those yeah. that are outside. outside. And when they come out, they commit much more serious crime. Doctor. And that has to do with crime yeah. and sentence disparity, sentence discrimination mm. that is creating and making our prisons more prone mm. to producing yeah. much more sophisticated criminals and criminalities mm. in our mm. countries, particularly in Africa, Asia, and Latin, Latin America. America, and indeed particularly in our beloved country, Nigeria. Doctor, we have to end there. Thank you very much You're most for welcome. coming on the show. You're what can you say about the program? Means, mm. it, I, will, I will simply say it's a nice one. Mm. I'm, I'm happy to be here because it's going to be on YouTube. Mm, yeah. And I think it's, it's, going, it's, mm. it's one of the four most that came to Kano oh. because I've never seen oh. one okay. that is doing the same thing. Okay. I mean, yeah. this is the first time I'm seeing mm. a, a place oh. where this kind of thing yeah. is going on, recognizing some mm. people based on what they have done in of their course. life, yeah. calling them up yeah. just to make it public. Yeah. And that is really a wonderful Thank thing you, and yeah. I greatly appreciate yeah. And I wish you would continue to yeah. be so soon for Inshallah. much more impactful people that we, we will continue to learn Inshallah. from. Them. And I, I hope you will best. link us up to as many experts as possible. You are most welcome both anytime. At home and I'm abroad. Feel free to call me anytime you so wish to call. Thank you very you much, Dr. Mekana Madaki, for being okay. on the show. On behalf of everyone that has contributed to the production of the show, my name is Umar Isa Dandabu. Not forgetting Abdul Basid, who is our cameraman, and the big boss, Zainab Abdurrahman Mea I uh, Well, from everyone in the studio, my name is Umar Isa Dandabu saying goodbye and see you very soon.